<laughs> Sam, you work with Tarantino a lot. When when he has a new film, do you just automatically say yes? Yeah. Or does he <laughs> send you a script and you read it and then you say yes? Well, he calls me first and says, I wrote a new script and I wrote a part for you. And I go, okay, uh, which one is it? And he'll give me a character name and then he'll say, I'll send you a script. And I do that with Chris Nolan. I pretty much know I'm going <laughs> yes. to do it. I mean, yeah. there's no question. He's not calling me to say, will you be in my movie? He's right. just calling me to say, this is the part that I just wrote for you. And I'm like, okay, great. And I'll Let's see you in a couple months. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> when he called me about Django, I knew I wasn't going to be Django because he started talking about it. I go, okay, I'm 15 years too late for Django. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I playing? He said, Stephen. I go, Who is he? Read the script. So I read great, it. Great. And I read it and I great. called him back and said, So you really want me to be the most despicable Negro <laughs> in the history of cinema? And he's like, Yeah, pretty much. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's How do has it. Tarantino changed from when you first worked with him to now on Hateful Eight? Well, he got more money to work with. They've mm -hmm. given him bigger films. Uh, has he changed? Not really. Uh, Quentin, Quentin loves movies, he loves the process. He loves the process. Uh, he loves actors. He loves uh, crew members. He loves everything about making movies. And when you do it, you get infused with that joy. Got room for one more? They call him the hangman. When the handbell says dead or alive, the rest of us just shoot you in the back and up on top of perch somewhere and bring you in dead over a saddle. But when John Roof, the hangman, catches you, you hang. What most I surprised you fired. about your Hateful Eight character when you did read it? What most surprised me about him? About the character. That he was the smartest person in the movie. Mm -hmm. And he is. You know, it's very, I mean, people say a lot of things about Quentin. He's racist, he's this, he's like that, that, that. But, you know, every character that he's ever written for me has been a very intelligent, very driven person. I mean, Jules is like the height of his professionalism. Mm -hmm. John's like a flake. You know, that's why he gets killed on a toilet. Stephen, Stephen was the head of that plantation. Mm -hmm. Leo's out, you know, fighting, fighting brothers and, you know, running his little club. Somebody's got to run the plantation. And that's my kingdom, you know. <laughs> I'm smarter than him. What about the amount of violence? Does it has it bothered you in those in his films? No, man. <laughs> okay. I don't have I don't have issues with violence in movies. I mean, it's a movie. It's not life, you know. And I I like those stories. I watch Hong Kong movies all the time. I spend a third of my life in Asian film, you know, just sitting around watching Asian films. I read violent novels. I read spy novels and mysteries and murders and horror stories. I've always liked that stuff. We grew up with that. Yeah. I grew up watching westerns on television. You know, it used to bother me that when guys got shot on TV, they just grabbed their chest and fell down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> or if you're playing cowboys with your friends, you shoot them, they go, you miss. You know, I shoot people in movies, their chest explodes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Two days before 9-11, um, Michael Jackson was having these concerts in New York. Mm. And I was introducing um, Usher and Whitney Houston. And I'm standing backstage waiting to go and introduce them. And somebody comes up behind me and starts doing the Ezekiel speech. People do that to me all the time. Mm. Uh, Ezekiel, pretty good. And I turn around, and it's Marlon Brando. Mm. I'm like, wow. oh my God. <laughs> Marlon Brando is reciting me. Like, I'm like, that's yeah. awesome. And we end up having this conversation, and he gives me a phone number. He says, yeah, call me. We need to talk. Da, da, da. So immediately, you know, I go back working, and I call that number. And I call a number, and somebody answers the Sons of Chinese Restaurant. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Brando there? Oh, yeah, hold on. Hold on. And then he, he comes to the phone. Well, next That's time I called, hilarious. it was Chinese Laundry. And I said, Mr. Brando there. And I realized he just filtered his calls through people by doing it because they would ask, who is it? And I go, Sam Jackson. And they go, oh, hold on. And then he comes to the phone. But he actually was reciting me. I could not believe it.